How's it going guys, Will here, and this is the iPhone 10, the phone I've personally been using for a really long time now, and I still think to this day, it's still one of the best value iPhones you can buy in 2020, especially if you find a good used deal on eBay. However, back in 2019, Apple released a cheaper alternative to the flagship 11 Pro, the simply titled iPhone 11, and I recently finished my review of this phone, you can check that out up there, but essentially, I really enjoyed it, especially if you want to keep your iPhone for a really long time. So now, we gotta ask, which one of these two iPhones should you buy in 2020? The iPhone 10 with its tele-zoom camera system, better screen and cheaper costs, or the iPhone 11 with that new A13 processor, ultra-wide camera, and newer release date? Let's find out. First off, let's start by taking a look at the specs. In terms of processing power, the iPhone 10 has the A11 bionic processor, whereas the iPhone 11 has that newer A13 bionic processor. Now, this affects a couple of things namely camera and battery performance, but both of those will be discussed in more detail later on. The iPhone 11 also has a gigabyte more RAM than the iPhone 10 at 4 gigabytes versus 3 gigabytes. Again, we're going to be talking more about how this affects performance later on. There's also multiple storage options for each, the iPhone 11 having storage options of 64, 128, and 256 gigabytes of storage, whereas the iPhone 10 still has 64 and 256 gigabyte, but it is missing that 128 gigabyte option. I personally have both mine in 64 gigabytes because I keep everything on the cloud, so I tend to reinvest that money back into cloud storage, but if you like to keep a lot of local files, say you play a lot of games, then this could be a really important factor. In terms of weight, the iPhone 10 is significantly lighter at 174 grams versus 194 grams, and while I haven't found this to be an issue in everyday use, holding both these phones side by side, I can definitely feel the difference, so if weight is an important factor for you, this should be something to consider. Both phones offer multiple color options, however the 10 is significantly more limited, only really offering black and white, or space grey and silver, as Apple have dubbed it. Whereas the iPhone 11 is available in red, white, green, purple, white, ah. Uh. Whereas the iPhone 11 is available in red, white, yellow, green, purple, and black. So you got plenty of choice. As for the specs, that just about does it. Other than the screens, which we're going to be talking about very soon. But as cool specs go, in most areas, the iPhone 11 does beat out the iPhone 10. After this, we got build quality. Both phones do have that glass back, which certainly makes them feel a bit more premium, as well as increasing that overall weight, but also massively increases the risk that your phone's going to get broken, and subsequently, you'll end up with a ridiculous repair bill. Both do have water resistance ratings, the iPhone 10 being rated to IP67, whereas the iPhone 11 is rated to IP68. IP67 means your phone can survive in up to a meter of water for half an hour, whereas IP68 means the phone gets an extra half a meter of security. Moving on, we have the screen, an area where many, including myself, were quick to criticize on the iPhone 11, due to that lack of resolution, brightness, and the bezels. And while on paper, these criticisms do still stand, after trying it out, I was really impressed with the iPhone 11 screen. As I said in my review, brightness wasn't an issue shoot, colors overall look nice and saturated, and all in all, the screen was nice and crisp. That said, the screen on the iPhone 10 is still better in my opinion, the higher resolution, brighter HDR OLED panels simply look stunning, and it is to this day one of my favorite phone screens I've ever used. In terms of specs, the iPhone 11 has a resolution of 1792 by 828 and a typical peak brightness of 625 nits, whereas on the iPhone 10 side of things, it has that higher resolution at 2436 by 1125, along with that higher overall typical peak brightness at 809 nits. The iPhone 10 screen also overall had more contrast, richer colors, and of course, support for HDR content. Now, another area where I personally prefer that iPhone 10 screen is with the 3D touch. I like the fact that on the iPhone 10, this is still a force-based action, which makes accessing shortcut menus or opening up app features in one click a truly unique experience. On the iPhone 11, Apple actually opted to use haptic touch, which operates on time press rather than the force level. I did get used to this eventually, but I still do prefer the 3D touch. As I said before, it felt like a unique feature to the iPhone side of things, whereas haptic touch just feels like it could have been a standard shortcut. As for the build quality, neither have cracked. That said, both have been used with cases, and overall, I have very few complaints in this department. As I said, I do think the iPhone 11 screen is really nice. However, the iPhone 10 is the clear winner here. Higher resolution, better colors, and 3D touch all tie this phone screen together to be one of my favorites that I've ever used. As for button placement, both are identical. They all feel well thought out, from the easily distinguishable volume buttons to the isolated lock button, as well as that mute switch. Now, this is both a pro and a con. It's a pro because they all feel nice and premium and mostly well thought out. However, as I've said before, I'm really not a fan of how well that lock button works. Hold for Siri does just seem a little illogical. And if you're moving from an iPhone with the home button, Siri will almost definitely pop up a couple of times. As for which is better, as I said before, they're pretty much exactly the same. So no points here, really. Following on from this, we have Face ID. Now, both these phones do feature Face ID. The iPhone 10 actually being the first ever iPhone to feature it. And I've actually 
actually found there to be a significant difference. While both are pretty fast and accurate, the iPhone 11 is just on a whole nother level. While the iPhone 10 requires a pretty clear view of your face, you can unlock the iPhone 11 even when it's resting on like a desk or your leg. And I love this. Granted, the speed and the accuracy of the iPhone 10 Face ID was eventually improved via software updates, and that generally made it about as fast as the iPhone 10s. However, at this point, I'm not sure that it will ever catch up to the iPhone 11. So yeah, solid win for the 11 here. Moving on, we have arguably one of the most important features of phones nowadays, the camera. And I'm going to preface this by saying there are some pretty huge upgrades here. In terms of the main camera system, both have a resolution of 12 megapixels and a dual lens system to provide two separate focal points. However, on the iPhone 11, Apple decided to replace that telephoto lens that I personally was a big fan of with an ultra wide lens. Now, as I've said before, I personally love that telephoto lens because of what I like to take photos of, but I have really been enjoying that wider focal length. The wider field of view is pretty fantastic for taking some nice landscape shots. And while I was fine with the original focal length for the most part, the wide angle takes it to a whole new level. In terms of the rest of the specs, the standard lens on the iPhone 10 has an aperture of f1.8, the telephoto an aperture of f2.4, and the seven megapixel front facing camera has an aperture of f2.2. The iPhone 11 on the other hand has the same f1.8 aperture for the standard lens and the ultra wide lens has an aperture of f2.4. So same apertures, they've just been flipped around. The front facing camera on the iPhone 11 also got a nice resolution bump. Now with a resolution of 12 megapixels to match the main camera and essentially what all those F numbers mean is the lower that number goes, the more light that's actually going to go through to the sensor. And in theory, this leads to better performance than low light as well as a blurrier background. I say in theory because the sensor on these phones are so small that you're not really going to be getting any real background blur without using portrait mode, but that's essentially what it's for. In terms of the actual photos, that A13 processor on the iPhone 11 brought along a few new technologies, such as deep fusion on the standard lens and pixel by pixel processing. Just gonna check that I didn't. Okay, no crazy plosives. The resulting images look more naturally sharper with significantly more dynamic range and a good level of saturation when compared to the iPhone 10. I found that the highlights look more preserved and overall the photos were cleaner on the iPhone 11. I also found that portrait mode was better on the iPhone 11. You can now use it on the standard lens, which was always a gripe I had with the iPhone 10 because you had to stand so far back from the subject. And overall, I found it to be more accurate on the iPhone 11. Another feature that I love is that you now actually get that aperture slider, which was actually introduced on the iPhone 10s, meaning that, as we talked about earlier, you can adjust how blurry that background is, just like on a DSLR. Well, no, sort of like on a DSLR. Portrait mode does work well on both phones front facing cameras, and I don't really have any complaints in this area. Next up, we have low light. Now, obviously, the iPhone 11 brought along that night mode that I personally love. And while there are software alternatives for the iPhone 10, I personally use Neural Cam on mine. The built-in night mode on the iPhone 11 still performed better when I tested both side by side. I also made a video on that. This mic stand is kind of getting in the way. Is there a way that I, hmm. Oh, this cheap shitty mic stand. That's better. See, now I can, I can do that again. It's the middle of a video and that is going to severely affect the audio quality. Overall, on the photo side of things, going from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 11, we do see performance increases all around, just so long as you don't need that telephoto. But, How's the video performance? Well, it's more improvements here too. The front facing camera now shoots 4K at up to 60 FPS to match the main camera on both the iPhone 10 and the 11. The iPhone 11 also bought extended dynamic range support on frame rates up to 60 FPS on the main camera and 30 FPS on the front facing camera, which again, works great. Both phones can shoot slow motion in 1080p at up to 240 FPS and on both, it looks like phone slow motion. Not much in this department's changed really, apart from the front facing camera on the iPhone 11 shooting 120 FPS, which Apple dub the slow fee and we all hate it. All this being said, I've never had a problem with the video quality on the iPhone 10, and I don't think the iPhone 11's got to a point where it can replace like a genuine camera. They're not nearly as significant as they were on the photo side of things, unless you constantly use the front facing camera. All in all, some nice improvements on the iPhone 11 side of things, so long as you don't need that telephoto lens. Next up, we're going to be talking a pretty important area, OS and app performance, along with the support cycle of each phone. In terms of performance, for now, both are pretty excellent. For what Watching videos, editing photos, and playing casual games both are pretty much flawless, with little to no lag, and as long as the app is well developed, chances are it's not gonna crash either. On the more intensive side of gaming, the iPhone 11 did do slightly better, most likely due to that new CPU and the extra gigabyte of RAM. That said, most of the time, the iPhone 10 still performed great, for now. One big factor is obviously gonna be the difference in age, the iPhone 11 being released in 2019, and the iPhone 10 being released in 2017, so a two-year difference in age. This means that chances are the iPhone 11 will be supported for 
two years longer than the iPhone 10. In the long term, this does mean that the iPhone 11 will perform better. However, due to the typical lifespan of the iPhone being five years, at this point, there are two and a half years left on the iPhone 10, so it's still not going anywhere anytime soon. If you want to keep your phone for longer than that, though, I would definitely say it's worth considering the support cycle. Next up. We got the speakers. Both phones use the top and the bottom speaker in conjunction to create a more full sounding stereo effect and this works well on both. However, the iPhone 11 has taken it a little bit further and it introduced a new technology known as spatial audio playback. This helps the speakers sound a little bit louder and significantly more full, which is always nice and while I still don't recommend them for anything more than casual listening, I'd say the iPhone 11 does take a clear win here. Now, the final element we're going to be talking about today is of course, battery life. The iPhone 10 has a battery size of 2760 milliamp hours, whereas the the iPhone 11 has a battery size of 3,110 milliamp hours, so a significantly larger battery on the iPhone 11. But how does this affect real world performance? Now, on most days, I can get through just fine on one charge with the iPhone 10, but I often do have to plug it in during the evenings. However, on the iPhone 11, it pretty much always has a good amount of spare battery left at the end of the day. And so while both have pretty good battery life, in my experience, I do have to give this round to the iPhone 11 for the bigger battery and overall improved battery life. All right, so as we can see from the results, the iPhone 11 is overall a better phone. So am I switching? No. I personally still find the iPhone 10 to be my perfect phone, especially with the size of the screen and the telephoto lens. I do personally find the size of the iPhone 11 screen a little too big for my hands. And while the ultra wide lens is a really cool addition, as I said, with the photos I personally like to take, I get much more use out of this telephoto. So, which of these two phones should you buy? Well, again, it all depends on your use case. Do you want longer support, a bigger battery and that ultra wide, or a better, smaller screen and a cheaper price? Either way, both are a pretty great value choice and will make a nice option for 2020. Feel free to let me know which one you prefer in the comments. But as of now, as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this, then smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I will see you guys in the next one.